Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome to the episode of Spitting Venom, aka The Venom Vlog. This is episode 222. And today we're actually going to talk a little bit more about Matt Gargan Venom, but I kind of want to ease into it. So we're not going to jump into the first trade paperback of Thunderbolts just yet, because obviously those are going to be longer discussion videos. And as I said, I just did a one hour video and I have another probably one hour video coming up when I do your responses. So I wanted to do something simple, but also I thought this was a great story to talk about because it kind of will introduce a lot of you to the Thunderbolts if you don't know who the Thunderbolts are, or at least this iteration of the Thunderbolts. Because the Thunderbolts, when they first began, I really loved that book. I think it was Kurt Busiek and Mark Bagley, and they launched uh, Thunderbolts right after the, the heroes from Heroes Reborn, like it was Captain America, Iron Man, Thor, Hulk, the Avengers, Fantastic Four, all of them disappeared after they battled an X-Men villain known as Onslaught. And then in that time, they had no Avengers in the Marvel Universe, and Spider-Man and other street-level heroes had to kind of step it up in New York to, you know, take the workload of villains and alien attacks and everything. And so what happened was this group of supervillains decided to disguise themselves as superheroes, and they became the Thunderbolts, but it was like Baron Zemo and a bunch of other villains disguising themselves as new characters. Um, the Beetle, I think, from Spider-Man became Mach 5. Uh, there was a guy named Goliath, and there was like, or Atlas, he became Atlas, I guess. And so there was all these great characters that were secretly supervillains, and they were kind of winning over America and the world as superheroes, and some of them even kind of started to like it, and they started to actually become good people. But there was a long-term plan there, and eventually it got revealed. And then the second iteration, I think, was led by Hawkeye from the Avengers, who was on a path of redemption at this point in the comics, and started to team up with these other, you know, questionable people, uh, and formed a new group, uh, a new group of the Thunderbolts called Hawkeye and the Thunderbolts. And that was the second iteration. And so now here we are, kind of into the third iteration of the Thunderbolts, when Warren Ellis took over the book after Civil War. And as we saw in Civil War, we had some villains teaming up, uh, working for the government, uh, you know, with uh, you know, Tony Stark kind of in charge of all this. This was part of his new initiative to rehabilitate some villains, give them a second chance, or understand that there might be some things out there that heroes won't do that might need to get done. And it showed you that Tony Stark also, at this point in the comics, was having slightly questionable morals as well. Uh, he was trying to get the work done. He was working kind of for the government, head of S.H.I.E.L.D. now, and he had to think like Nick Fury, and he realized how hard Nick Fury's job really is and the kind of tough choices Nick Fury has to make sometimes. And so at this point in the comic books, they released a one-shot called Civil War The Initiative. And that's what we're going to talk about today, but not the whole issue, because the issue is kind of focused on Iron Man. I would recommend that you go pick it up uh, if you can't find it in print. Uh, the Comixology, I know, has it for $1.99 for the, the digital copy, and that's what I picked it up on and read, because it has not been recollected in any other trade paperbacks, I think. I think maybe it was collected in one of the Iron Man trade paperbacks, but since I don't have that one, I was like, all right, I'll just buy the issue by itself. And I got to reread it, and I love it. Um, Warren Ellis draws the nine pages that are in the middle of this book, and... Um, Mark Silvestri does the art, and Mark Silvestri is a super talented artist, very awesome guy, someone who I had the privilege of working for when I worked at Top Cow. Uh, Matt Hawkins was the one who hired me over there, and I worked with Matt a lot, but uh, Mark Silvestri is obviously the one who runs that company and owns that company, and he's got a Batman book coming up with, uh, with the Joker that I'm very excited about, but his artwork is really great, and I know it cannot be easy to do this style of art, and so I know it does take him time to do stuff, uh, but uh, it's always worth the wait to me. And this one-shot issue that he drew the whole thing of was fantastic. But the middle nine pages of what we're going to focus on, and I'm going to show some artwork here from those middle nine pages. Um, so it starts off, and we're going to kind of get an introduction here to the Thunderbolts. So if you have never seen what the Thunderbolts are or don't know about this iteration, we're going to ease you in nice and slow, and we're going to get some Venom action in here too. So what we have is we have this character named uh, the Hurricane, uh, he's the second version of the hurricane and you see all this text coming up that he's being tracked by someone and uh, it says takedown commencing in three minutes he's you know he's on the run and uh, he's just a superhero he's a regular dude he's got a super suit and he's now being hunted because he has decided not to register with Tony Stark in the government um, and so we have here Venom showing up to be his first uh, you know enemy that he has to fight and overcome and uh, Venom shows up grabs his head slams him into the wall and throws him down the hallway and already they can tell you know his it is people in charge who are Songbird and Norman Osborn are the people who are kind of in charge and overseeing the day-to-day -day operation of these, you know, battles and sending these villains out and choreographing where they're going to be and using strategy and stuff. So Norman Osborn's like the director of the Thunderbolts program and Songbird's kind of like the one who's, you know, overseeing kind of the mission. So is Moonstone, but they're kind of, Songbird and Moonstone are kind of at odds with each other and trying to fight for leadership because Songbird still wants to kind of be heroic and Moonstone 
totally doesn't <laughs> at all. And so Venom comes in and they are they're quickly like, dude, disengage, disengage. What are you doing? You're gonna kill this guy. Uh, so you know, Hurricane's able to slip away from him. And then he comes across Radioactive Man. And Radioactive Man starts igniting his powers, releasing radiation everywhere. And it's affecting, uh, you know, obviously Hurricane here. And he's starting to freak out and he's really stressing. And then there, again, he could be killed. And they want him alive because people saw him running into this building. And they saw at least a couple of the Thunderbolts going after him. So they need for public, you know, safety concerns. Uh, they're kind of like cops with, uh, you know, security cameras on them. Some of them are. Uh, there's close shield, you know, satellites and things watching them and looking after them. So they have to be very careful with some of the team members on their team as we're going to see but some of the other ones who have been seen going in they have to make sure he comes out alive otherwise there's going to be a lot of questions that are going to get asked and their program is going to get shut down very quickly and they'll all go back to jail um so again uh, radioactive man is asked to let him go and then so once he does and now a uh, hurricane has come across uh, our friend here penance who used to be robbie from the new warriors who used to be known as speedball but if you remember in the comics, uh, Speedball and the New Warriors were had a reality TV show and they ran in to fight some supervillains and they caused a villain named Nitro to use his powers, which was self-explode. And that caused the Stanford incident where, you know, hundreds of people were killed um, on national TV on this reality show. And all of Robbie's teammates were mo mortally wounded, some of them killed. And Robbie is now suffering for that. He is now um, has decided to call himself Penance. He put like an Iron Maiden suit on him. His powers work differently because he's got like a weird PTSD thing going on. So his powers don't work the same. So now the only time his power works are if he gets hurt. So he has a suit that has little spikes in it. So every time he moves, it's stabbing him and it's allowing him to activate his power. So he's a really broken person at this point in the comics. And I really like, even though it's a dark road, I really like what they did with him because what else would happen? I mean, after you know, being this happy-go-lucky young guy and getting all these people killed, of course he would become a really broken person after that. So I, I really like the direction they go in with his character. So yeah, unfortunately, Hurricane comes face-to-face -face with Penance, and uh, it does not go well. Without even an effort, uh, Penance grabs Hurricane by the back of the head and throws him right through a wall uh, and into the path of another member of this team who is the one that no one can know is on the team because if the public finds out this member is on the team of the Thunderbolts, then they will immediately lose public trust. So this is their ace in the hole, as it were. This was this is the teammate that they send in who is not picked up by any scans. He usually wears a cloaking device to get him in and out of locations. He has an extraction team to get him out to make sure no one sees him. Uh, so they go through a lot of precautions to make sure that nobody knows that Bullseye, the Daredevil villain, the psychotic Daredevil villain, is on the side of the Thunderbolts. So the other ones, they have questionable morals, but they can easily pass to the public that they are on the path of redemption. But Bullseye, no way. He's a stone-cold killer. There is no getting through to this guy. And they bring him in when they absolutely need to take someone down quickly, swiftly, and make it hopefully look not too messy. Uh, but of course, he has that killer instinct in him, and he kind of crosses the line sometimes, or at least wants to. So in this instance, he takes a bunch of darts and he throws them into major uh, organs and parts of, uh, of Hurricane's legs and hits very, you know, pressure points and things and pretty much cripples him. Uh, so you see it here, hitting him in the legs and the lower back and uh, Hurricane just drops. And at this point, Hurricane is freaking out. He's just a dude trying to do the right thing. And imagine yourself in these shoes. And this is why I really gravitated to Warren Ellis' Thunderbolts run. And even though the, I don't think they do a ton of interesting stuff with Venom in that run, they kind of just make him the monster, which is fine. That's the role he plays, and I kind of like that. But I like it more at him in Dark Avengers, where he's kind of having fun with the symbiote again. Uh, so I don't like a lot of the Venom stuff they do, but I do like the run itself. And Warren Ellis did a really great job bringing these psychotic people together, uh, and then some of them realizing when they're next to people like Bullseye, hey, I don't want to be this far gone. I actually want to bounce back and redeem myself. I cannot be in league with a guy like this. And so, you know, you kind of take pity on Hurricane here because... He's begging. He's like, I'm just, he's, you can see he's broken. He can't walk now. And he's just like, please don't kill me. Like, I, I'm just a superhero. I'm just trying to do the right thing. I, I don't want to hurt anybody. And of course, Penance is like, yeah, I was a superhero once and I didn't want to hurt anybody. And then a lot of people died. So he's like, you're, you know, you need to be captured. You need to be put down uh, if you're not going to register with us. If you're not going to get the proper training uh, with, you know, Tony Stark and S.H.I.E.L.D. and the government, then you need to be put down. And so you can kind of see both angles here, but you see how frightening it is now for heroes to be hunted uh, and then being hunted by villains who get approval from the government to hunt them down is even a scarier thing because you kind of wonder am I going to get out of this alive and I know that's something that's very relatable today with a lot of stuff that happens in the world where you know people are in these situations where, with authority where they're like 
can I make it out of this alive? And that's what this feels like. And it plays that up. And it's, and this was years ago when this came out, like five, six years ago. And this is, uh, or maybe even a little bit longer. And this, it's really intense stuff. Uh, so Moonstone shows up. She's like, all right, I'm here. All points, stand down. We got the guy, Swordman. You know, I'm going to feed him to you and you take the final blow. So she knocks uh, Hurricane here right through the floor. And again, he's just like, I need to get to the roof. I need to get some space. I need to get, you know, be able to fly out of here. I need something. Um, and uh, it's just not going to go his way. So he gets knocked down into the basement and Moonstone's like, you know, bullseye, get the F out of here, get your cloaking device, get your, you know, extraction team and get out of here so no one knows you're here. And then she grabs Hurricane, uh, you know, after Swordsman slices uh, his mask off. And I am not showing all the artwork because I want you guys to go check it out yourself. Uh, but uh, she grabs uh, Hurricane by the head and pulls him out. She's like, all right, let's go say hi to the cameras and let them know that we successfully stopped this, uh, you know, criminal now. And, uh, and we didn't, no one got hurt, no one got killed, and we played nice, you know. And so uh, then you got, boom, this big shot here of the team. And now you see Songbird in the middle there and Norman Osborn as the Green Goblin above her. Uh, Norman Osborn is definitely in the series, as we'll get to, is fighting that sanity break. He's trying to, he's taking pills, he's doing whatever he can that the government gave him some, you know, uh, you know ways to suppress the goblin. Uh, that's inside of them uh, but it doesn't hold up unfortunately very well uh, for the most part and then you have songbird there so we haven't met those two members directly even though some of you guys might know who those characters are but we didn't meet them in this story but i wanted you to at least get a feel for the team itself and kind of see what venom's working with and what and what capacity they're using venom in and he's definitely the the loose cannon on this team uh, you know bullseye is the psycho but venom is like the cannibal loose cannon and you're going to see a lot of uh really weird and intense things they do with him he's definitely going to eat people he's definitely going to eat them to the bones and spit the bones out i mean it's going to get really violent and nasty and gory as we progress through the storylines of matt gargan as venom so this is not eddie brock this is not the venom you knew who threatened to eat brains and maybe did it on a couple occasions this is a full-on psychopath who is eating people uh, and I know some of you don't like that interpretation, and even at times I don't as we go through this book. I'll be honest with you guys when we get to those issues and when I, you know, discuss them. But uh, I do, that is the role he plays on his team, and I think the team overall works really well, and Warren Ellis did a great job balancing it, and Sylvester's art on this story is amazing. So I highly recommend whether you get the digital copy or you track down a, you know, printed one, pick up Civil War, The Initiative. It's a really awesome book, and uh, and I, I loved it. I thought this was fantastic and a great introduction into the stories that we're about to get into very soon. But as always, I want to hear what you think of this. What do you think of the Thunderbolts run that comes after? We will definitely talk about that so you can save some of your opinions for those videos if you want. But if you've read this story, let me know what you think. And if you haven't, let me know if you're going to go pick it up. Thanks so much for watching my show. As always, like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff, and I'll see you in the future. Peace.